Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Google Causal Impact Package in R. And I'm going to do it using it in a very interesting case study, which is the Volkswagen scandal. And what we are going to do is that we're going to measure what was the impact that this scandal had on the stock price of Volkswagen. For those who don't remember, it was a scandal in September 2015 and it was discovered that Volkswagen was duping. So it had some kind of chip that was reducing how many emissions it, the car was doing. So it was not actually reducing, so it just stating that it was less emissions than what it actually was. And this was all a big thing. They were recently fined in a lot, a lot of money. And I think in total, and it is even mentioned in the news, it was 11 million cars. So it was a really proper scandal. And for the purpose of using causal impact, we have just what we need. First, we need the treatment start, which is this September of 2015. And as well, we know that Volkswagen was in the car industry. And as a result, we'll not include any company from the automotive industry because they might have been affected as well. Google Causal Impact Package is part of my Acrometrics course. It has both versions of R and Python. And if you are interested in knowing more about it and also learn a bit about the intuition behind it, please do check out my course on Udemy, which is in the link. Going back to our studio, and the first thing that we need to define are the dates. So as a comments, start date definition. And the key idea here is that we will have a training period and treatment period. So we'll do start and we'll give it more than one year and a half. So we go to 2014, 01, 01. And then we have the treatment per se. So treatment equals, and we are going to do 2015, 0901. So 1st of September, we don't know exactly the date, but overall it's also not relevant. As long as it is before the actual treatment starts, it's fine. And then finally, we are just going to analyze it for four months. So we go to 2015 and then 1231. And this is it. Next, we need to combine these dates. So we need to define a pre and post period. And the key idea is that causal impact knows when it was the actual training period and it, when it was the treatment period. And very simply, we'll call it pre period and we'll go and do and see to combine. And then we combine our uh, start and as well, we combine our treatment. Now, the thing is, is that overall encoding dates have a very particular uh, structure. And when we include here the quotation marks, it tells us that it is a string. Now, for causal impact work, it needs to know that it is a date. As a result, we need to do as dot date over here and then close the parentheses over here. And this way it knows. So if we are to now run this, we see here that it is a string. And now if we run this, it immediately knows that it is a date format. Next, we need to do the same, but for the post period. And again, now we know, so we do as date, then C to combine. Now we start off in the treatment per se, and then we go up until the end. Let's do control enter again to run. Here we go. We have our post period. Next, we need a, a data set and we're going to retrieve a weekly data from the stock price of Volkswagen and then some other scandals. To do this, we need a very particular package. As a comment, we are going to retrieve data. And to do this, if you don't have it, you can do install packages and then T series. I already have it, so I'm going to leave it as a comment and I will just do library and then T series. 
and this will be it. I'm going to do control enter to run. And now I'm going to retrieve first the Volkswagen data. So I'm going to call it Volkswagen. And to do this, I need to use the get dot ist quote. If I do F1 to ask for help, I can see so download historical finance data. I need the instrument overall. This is clearly important. Also the start. So when do I want my data to start and as well an end. Then I also want a quote. So what type of data do I want? Do I want the high, the low? I'm going to go with the close. And the other thing that I require is compression. So I'm going to go with weekly, which I find to be more than enough. Overall, it also makes us a bit easier when it comes to data prep, because there will be no NAs. Let's go back and I go to my get.isquote function and I start with the instrument and the instrument of Volkswagen is VOW.D because it is a German stock. Next, I want a start. So start equals start. And then come again and equals end. Now I want the quote, which equals close. And then finally compression. So compression equals and I want weekly. So it's a W. Let's do control enter. It is running. Volkswagen appears here. If I just run Volkswagen, I can see here that I have my weekly data and the stock price. Going back, I do now need some control groups and I'm going to pick a few. So I copy Volkswagen, then I do one, two, three, and then four. And this would be it. And I'm going to choose a diverse set of companies from diverse industries, starting with ads slash social media. Let's do Facebook. And then the instrument of Facebook is FB. Next, what I want is the Disney. So from entertainment and the instrument is DIS. Afterwards, pharmaceutical, and then I do Novartis. And very simply, the instrument is this NVS. And then finally, in the honor of one of the great things in life, which is beer, let's do Carlsberg. With the instrument being the longest one, it is Carl hyphen B dot co now let's go back to our facebook and let's run this run this for in order to have them here on the right we can see our Carlsberg, disney facebook and novartis as well as the volkswagen and uh, just notice that i no wrote volkswagen wrong and then it's really good to correct some rights so volkswagen and i think it's this way hopefully and now I'm going to do control enter again, just to have it right. Next, what we want to do is that we want to combine all our stocks. So getting as a common, getting our stocks together. The key idea is just to have one object that we can mention that it has all of them. And we'll call it stocks. And then we do our arrow. We do C bind to combine and bind them together. And now we just need to write them all. So we have our Volkswagen. Next, we have Facebook, then Disney, as well, Carlsberg, and then finally Novartis. This is it. So if we do control enter, stocks appear here. If I just run stocks, control enter again, and basically I have here Novartis isolated, but if I go up, then I have here the close Volkswagen, close Facebook, Disney and Carlsberg. Next, we do want to make sure that our control group is good enough. And the way to do it is that we check the correlations in our training period. As go, so checking correlations 
in the training period. And overall, we want them to try to be at least above 0.4, maybe 0.5 is ideal. If anything, the higher the better. So if you have everything at 0.9, absolutely amazing. Moreover, um, more is more. As a result, let's do correlation. And the key here is that our data set overall comprised from the very start until the very end. Nonetheless, our correlation will be just in the training period. As a result, we need to subset our data set so that it only includes this data of for our training period. Moreover, we have time series. So we need to use a very particular function, which is window. Open parenthesis, let's do F1 to see. So we have time series for which is called windows, and it's basically a subsetting function for time series. We have here the X, which we have done, which is the stocks. And we also have to include the start and an end. So we go and we do stocks. So this will be our X. And then we have start. So start equals start. And then our end will be equal to treatment. And here we go. Let's do control enter. We have here our correlation. And next, what we want to do is to actually do the correlation. So core. And the only thing, if we do F1, that we definitely must include is the X. So the Y is optional. The NARM is also optional. But we also want to have NAs. So we can just go ahead and include our correlation over here. If we do Control Enter, we have a look at Volkswagen and we see that it is really not correlated with Facebook, so very poor. And it is somewhat correlated with Disney, Novartis and Carlsberg. So everything above 0 0.5, so more or less fine. And as a result, what I would actually do is that I would challenge you to go and find more stocks that would be more correlated in order to have a better control group than what I have achieved here. As a result, we are going to drop Facebook. So we just go to our stocks. And the key here is that we'll have a final stocks. So to have like a final data set, because the correlation is just for us to have a look at our control group that we have and just to weed out the stocks that are not worth it. And in our case is Facebook. So we just delete and we have our final stocks, which have appeared here on the right. Next, we are actually finally ready to use causal impact. And as a comment, so doing causal impact. Now, for those who don't have it, we can do install packages and then causal impact. I already have it. So again, as a comment, and then I just use the library command to pull out causal impact, control enter. And now we need to create an object in which we will store the causal impact model and we'll call it impact. And again, we use the causal impact. So this is the function that will enable us to use. So if we do F1 on causal impact, we know that we can do a lot of things over here. Let me increase the size of the help function. And the key idea here is that we can use the data. So this one we must use as well, the pre-period and the post-period. We have everything ready. And then we have model arcs. This is completely optional. Personally, I like to use end seasons, but in order to keep this video as short as possible with just the very basics, we'll skip all the optional stuff. So let's continue. So we do data and data equals final underscore stocks comma. Now we want to have our pre period. So pre period equals pre period. Remember that we prepared it at the very beginning. And then as well, our post period, post period equals post period. Here we go. Let's do control enter to run. And we see an error here, but don't worry about this one. This is just a formatting one. And it's actually a result that when we did the dates, we just put here some dates and then we put weekly level. And of course they won't match as well. 
Fortunately, this is also not an issue when it comes to running because as you see, we just get the results and this is just a formatting error. So nothing to worry about. Next thing that we want to do is to now check the results. And I'm going to do two things. So we have the summary of the impact and then we have as well the plot of the impact. I usually start with the plot because I think it looks better if we zoom in here on the right and then now looking at the graphs, I would literally just focus on the cumulative one, which is the one that really matters and that tells us the results. Google causal impact enables us to say whether the impact is greater in the beginning, middle, end, if there's been some kind of slowdown or recovery. And overall, we did put four months. And what we do see here is that the impact has been a constant straight line, that there has been no recovery whatsoever. And overall, these are the results that we more or less expected because it was such a big scandal involving so many cars that it was really expected this to be negative. Going back. And the last thing that we can do is this summary and just to see what was the effect. Now we're talking about stock price, which is a relative KPI. As a result, we cannot look at this cumulative column. We can just look at the averages. And what we do see, and I think the particular focus is this minus 30%, which means that Volkswagen lost 30% of its value over the course of four months. So these results are absolutely as I expected them to be. Overall, I would have liked to have a better control group. So I, I would leave you with a challenge of finding a better one. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use the Google causal impact and also that you liked this case study. If you enjoyed it, please do subscribe and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.